So we've talked about charge in materials already. We talked about insulators, where all the charges are stuck in one place, although you can get a little charge on the surface if you rub the insulator. And we talked about conductors, where the sum of the electrons are free to move around inside the conductor. And we th thought about that in the world of electrostatics a little bit. If you bring a charge near a conductor, it'll push all the free electrons away, or maybe it'll attract the free electrons. We thought about that. But when the electrons move in a conductor, that is something else. When they move continuously through a conductor, that is something called current. And I don't want to overstate current or anything, but it is basically the foundation of our entire modern civilization. So maybe we should talk about it a little bit. Current really is just how much charge flows through a conductor, and I could stop there, but let's go a little bit farther, even in parentheses, per unit time. It's really the rate of flow. So how much charge flows per second is what we're trying to think about. Um, let's draw a conductor then. Here I'm going to draw a really large view of a conducting wire. So let's say it's a metal. So a metal is a conductor because the little electrons are free to move. So let's say our little negative electrons are drifting that way. Wire we know is full of electrons and protons and neutrons. We know the protons and neutrons are stuck still in the crystal lattice. A lot of the electrons are stuck with them, but some of the electrons are free to move. So let's imagine they're all moving that way. So in a wire current, or the current in a, in a conducting wire, it's the negative electrons flow. It's actually negative charge. But this is the confusing thing. When we talk about current, we envision a flow of positive charge. Okay, So when I say we envision a flow of positive charge, well, I don't. I still envision electrons. But when we talk about current, which we define with the symbol I, we define current as how much charge, delta Q, the change, the amount of charge that flows in a certain amount of time delta T. And that is positive charge by definition. So we define current as the flow opposite of the electrons. You can pretend there's a little positive charges moving the other way. But basically, current, if this is the situation, the current is that way. You think of the current as that way. It's actually not a vector, but we think of the current as going the opposite direction as the electrons because we define current as positive charge per unit time. So this is equal to, you can tell then, it's the amount of charge over time. And you might say, it's still a little bit of an imprecise definition. I mean, how much charge? All this charge? And if I made it longer, would there be more charge? So you've got to think about a little cross-sectional area like this inside the wire. So it's really the amount of charge that crosses that cross-sectional area per unit time. So we can say the charge over time through an area, a cross-sectional area in the wire. So that's now a pretty precise definition. Electrons flow this way in a metal, current goes that way. Count the amount of current going through the wire, through a cross-section, everything, except, oh well, we need a unit. Well, if we use MKS, you can tell what the units are. Uh, charge is in coulombs. And time, of course, is in seconds. But this is one of those units with a special name. It's the amp, or ampere. So you'll see it abbreviated big A or written out amp, or written out amperes. So one amp is one coulomb per second. That's a fairly large current. Most currents running around in little devices are usually milliamps, but you can easily have amps. Uh, you can have a lot of amps. 